to Ants Talk. My next guest is one of the cast from the Netflix sensation Tiger King, which has turned the cast into household names. John Finlay was not only a worker at the zoo, but also in an 11-year relationship with Joe Exotic, who the series focuses on. There is worldwide interest in the cast, and I wanted to get to know John a little more. Let's speak to him now. Welcome to the show, John. How are you? I'm pretty good, and how about you? I'm very well, thank you. I've just woken up here in Australia, so (laughs) excuse me if I'm a little fuzzy. So, John, how did you start working at the animal park? Uh, I was a month out of high school, and I needed a job, and I always wanted to work with animals, so that was the first place I went, and that was the first place to call me back, so that's just where I went. What an amazing start to a career, though. (laughs) Had it, had yeah, you encountered anyone? Thank you. Had you encountered anyone like Joe before? Uh no that that was a definitely different type of uh, person. Yeah, <laughs> he seems very unique. <laughs> oh, very. I bet. And do you think the producers wanted to portray you in a certain way, or do you think that it was fair the way that they did portray you? <sighs> I didn't exactly know how they wanted to portray me, but the shirt off was just kind of a weird thing. I I didn't know if I was the only one doing it or what exactly was going on. It was just a way for me to get my story out and kind of get a lot of pent up anger and uh, rage out. It's just, I saw it as a way for therapy for me. Mm. I think a good thing too is that even now that you've done it, um, people are hearing your story because you know you're getting sort of the attention to be able to tell it, which is a really good thing. Yeah, it's it's been a whole lot better. I mean, I I rather just plain out tell my story than try and hide anything because when you hide it, it tends to do a lot of bad things. Yeah, I mean, it it's better to live positive than it is negative, because when I lived in the negative, it kind of drove me down like really bad. So I was in a bad place, and I was like, "And this is not me." So yeah, um, it seems that the staff were working at the zoo for more more than passion. It was actually nothing really to do with the profit they were really passionate about working there do you think that they were unfairly treated or compensated for their work most of them were fairly treated he did joe did a lot for a lot of the people and i wouldn't necessarily say that they did him wrong or they did each other wrong it's just the way that Joe talked to the employees and stuff, it was, it really downgraded us a lot and made us not want to be there. Mm. And that was just the way Joe was. He was one that always thought of himself better, but I made quite a few relationships with the people there and I never, really beat anybody down it was just hey y'all need to do it this way or y'all need to do it that way we weren't trying to be isolated from each other it was we were trying to do this all as a team and joe didn't quite see it that way i mean it was such a unique sort of way to work i suppose did a lot of people because a lot of people lived was it on the park or nearby most of everybody lived on the park. Right. Yeah, that would be <laughs> quite uncomfortable yeah, was, a lot of times. <laughs> it was like being trapped in a cage 24-7. Yeah. So how long were you there at the park, like all up? I was there 15 years. Wow. That was a, that'd be, that's a really long time to be stuck in that situation. Very long time. Yeah, and that was... That was my life for 15 years. Well, not quite 15 years. 11 years of it was with Joe and the rest of it was when I was with my baby's mama. Yeah. 
Fantastic. And I originally saw the interview with Joe and Louis Thoreau, who seemed to almost mock Joe during the interview. Did you have the chance to meet him? I met Louis and he he's a pretty nice guy. I mean, it's just, I think Joe kind of rubbed him the wrong way at times. And yeah. that's why Joe was the way he was. But Joe is also a showman. So he going to do what he does because that's him yeah because he was doing the magician act he was a singer <laughs> yeah and he he wasn't actually singing the songs but you know you always think of a magician as doing it by himself mm. but he always had assistants doing it and the ones that were actually making the magic happen were the assistants and right. I was one of those assistants too. So, yeah. Are you having fun with the attention or do you prefer being introverted? Uh, you know, I wasn't much of a people person until this and I've actually become pretty comfortable with talking to people now. It's good. It's been between the two managers. They've been working with me on how to talk and all that different stuff, but I've just become who I am because that's how I want to be. I'm not going to really change too much. It's just, yeah. I'm going to be me. Well, I mean, I've got to let you know that a lot of people here in Australia know exactly who you are now. So if you ever <laughs> want to come down under, I'm sure you'll be welcomed. <laughs> that could be turned so bad, but, <laughs> we do actually want to come down under and uh, I want to go to the Australian zoo and yeah. I want to tour Australia and really know what it's like to be down there because I've always dreamed of visiting Australia. It's, it's probably one of the greatest places I think on this earth. It really is. You'd love it because it, the, the unique thing about it is each state that you go to, there's something completely unique about it. Um, and the wildlife differs in every state also. It's absolutely quite incredible. Yeah, I just have to be careful bringing my mom down there because her name is Sheila. So <laughs> I mean, you, you wouldn't, she wouldn't know whether you're talking about that lady or her or what. So I was like, I had to be really careful taking you down there. <laughs> That's actually funny because my um, ex boss was called Sheila, also. <laughs> <laughs> she was cool. I loved her, actually. Hey, what is it like what, working with such wild animals? Do you think that they resent being ca held captive? And I mean, not just in the situation of the zoo you were in, but in any case. Um, I want. <laughs> It's, that's a hard question to answer because, you know, we took care of them so well that we formed relationships with them and we got to know exactly what their mentality was or their dislikes and their likes and stuff. It, we kind of made it feel as much as home as we could. Mm. It may not exactly look like their habitat, but we tried to make them feel like they're part of a family. Yeah. What was it like when the first time you actually faced one, like face the tiger? Um, the Were you first a bit one I come, <laughs> I wasn't actually scared. It was more, um, I was overexcited. Yeah. And the first one I come into contact with, his name was Clint Black, and he was like three years old i mean he's full grown and i when we were in dodge city kansas it was the first time i'd ever really been around a cat that size and we spent five days at the mall and we uh just had him on display and we would at that time we were able to take pictures with him because there were no regulations against it but mm -hmm. to be around him it was like being around a mythical creature almost because you don't expect them to be as big and that gentle at times, but yeah, we never sedated our animals on the road. Nothing. 
they got bottle. I mean, he would drink from a bottle and be like a big old baby. I love and it. It was just, it was pretty crazy. I absolutely love tigers. I mean, of any cats, I absolutely love. I'm obsessed with them. Um, and funny enough, at the moment, I've got a humongous St. Bernard dog and he's 86 kilos. <laughs> so, it's, I, you know, I love, I don't know what that is in pounds, sorry, but it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine me as a dog, basically. <laughs> um, I, I've got two dogs. I've got uh, what you call a matador. He's a oh, massive yeah. and Labrador mix. Yeah. And he's six months old and what, 80 70, 80 pounds. Wow. He's yeah, huge. I love, them. I love size. animals. And then my other one is a red healer, and she's like three months and like maybe 15 pounds. Wow. <laughs> maybe. It's funny because when we first got this dog, you could literally watch it grow. It was literally in front of your eyes. It was happening so fast that now, I mean, he lays on top of you and it's like, you know, a ton of bricks on top of you. <laughs> and he loves yeah. it too. Um, so what is the one thing you would like people to know about tigers? What's the one thing you'd like them to know? I would say that they make good pets, but you know, there's a lot of laws now that are making it where you can't have pets. But if you spend time with them, they, they do have different personalities. They do. There's, they're a lot like humans, but there is a point where they do have a wild side and mm. they do have a domesticated side, but, there's a lot that goes in to take care of them. There's yeah. a lot with the vet bills. There's a lot with the food. It's just, it's about like owning a dog, but this one grows up to kill you and possibly hurt you. But yeah, but I think it's very, they're very similar to just cats because I mean, I've owned a lot of cats myself and they can be beautiful and loving and, you know, part of your family, but then they can also turn on you and scratch you and, you know, f bite your legs and stuff as you walk past. I mean, so it's, I, I sort of see them in the same light, except one's bigger, heavier and a lot more ferocious. <laughs> oh yeah. That, I mean, they're just like a house cat, but they're 600 to 1200 pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, with a lot that, bigger that's teeth. the biggest difference. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So when did when did um, the time at the park end for you? Um, I don't know the exact month, but it was in 2018 is when I. Oh, so not too long ago. Yeah. Right. Did you miss the um? Did you miss the animals after? Oh yeah, yo. I mean, a lot of those animals I raised personally, and a lot of those animals. I really got to know, and some of my animals I couldn't take with me. I mean, I mean, I couldn't take the alligators or the tigers or anything, but it's the one thing that you miss the most of everything that you have at a zoo is the animals. Yeah. I bet. This is Ant's Talk. Can we chat about your addiction? When did drug use start for you? Uh, uh, I was 21, I think is what we said the other day. I was 21 when that started happening. Yeah. And, and I it, know that I... went on for eight years. Wow. And I know you've been now clean for six years and would love to work with youth teaching them about addiction. What would be the one thing you would tell them? Um, if anybody ever says, hey, you want to try this? They need to turn and walk the other direction. Don't even think about it. It's, it leads you down a dark road. Yeah. And a lot of times that dark road leads to death or the separation of your loved ones, the missing out on 
times that you want to be a part of. And mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it has a good memory, but there's always a darker path down, down that road. Yeah. Did was so when, it, what was your drug of, drug of choice or what was the one you started with? Cause you know, how a lot of people say, Oh, don't try marijuana. It's a gateway drug and stuff like that. Um, what's your opinion around all that? Um, well, my choice of drug was meth and that there were some other ones involved, but it was mainly meth and that is not a great drug to do because yeah. after a while of doing it, I was starting to hear voices. Wow. I was seeing things that weren't there. Uh, I was having issues with controlling my anger and stuff and it just there's things that you do when you're on it that you really regret and you look back and you're like that is that was not me yeah and that's where i was six years ago and ever since then i've never looked back i look straight forward so it's amazing Good on you. Because I think it takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength to be able to do it. You know, it really does. You should be proud of it. It does. And I was one to do it by myself. And so I didn't really have all the help of, of professionals or anything out. So it's a little bit harder doing it by yourself. But once you set your mind to it, it's easier to do. That's so, so amazing. Good on you. I also know you've now been engaged to Stormy. How long ago did you guys meet? We met, our one year anniversary is May 10th. So. This Sunday is a year since we met. Wow. Well, this okay. Sunday is a year since we met. My bad. <laughs> I'm sure you've got the gift ready. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, I'll have order. a gift ready, but she may not know exactly <laughs> what I'm going to get. So it'll be something that she didn't think of. I love it. Now I know you identify as straight. Would you say there are any huge differences in relationships in either sex? There is no difference in the dynamic at all. I mean, each couple is going to have their fights. They're going to have their disagreements. I mean, there's times me and Stormy has disagreements. So it's just one of those things every couple is going to have their yeah. problem. Yeah. I know it's, it's funny because um, we've, we've been in isolation and lockdown here in Australia. And it's, it's so funny because my husband and I, we, we spend so much time together anyway. So we don't really fight, <laughs> but a lot of people that we know actually start uh, like when I'm talking to them online and stuff, you can see them brawling already. And I'm thinking that the divorce rate's going to skyrocket after this. <laughs> uh, it's actually made us stronger because I mean, we have had our spats during this isolation and stuff, but it's, we kiss and make up. I mean, it's not exactly like what everybody thinks it is, but we have our own way of making up to each other. And, we actually have made a lot of this work because we're pretty much the same person and we do everything together. We talk about the problems we talk, do every it's nothing is an individual in this. We both say we're a team in this. So we're going to do this as a team. Yeah. Communication's really, really important in any relationship and even more so in this sort of situation that the world's in at the moment. Yeah, and that's that's the thing is I wasn't much on communication and she was and now it's to the point where we talk about everything because that's the way it should be. Yeah, exactly. Now, there's been a lot of attention around your new look. <laughs> what has it done for your self-confidence to get much, so much attention? You know, when I got my teeth done, it I had a lot of trouble trying to keep them in my mouth and the process of it, it 
it took me a while to be able to really wear them because I had so much infection in my mouth that my, well, in the documentary, my face was like swollen too. Yeah. And that, it's made me look different. And since that last part of the documentary came out, people started recognizing me more and the self-confidence, it just, it's been the same. I mean, she put more self-confidence in me than anybody else has. Mm. But my agent's been putting quite a bit in there, and I I really have them to thank why I am the way I am now because it's not – there's no negative influence or anything. It's all the positive that they've been giving me that I've really had more luck with than anything else. Yeah. So in your local town, are you sort of really well known now? Uh, no, because I don't go out in town. I go away from the town. And with your, with your teeth, when did it start happening that you were losing your teeth? Um, I was actually in high school when that started happening. And my mom tried to get it to where my teeth were fine and they were fixed and stuff. And, Joe even tried to, and actually as a result of why my mouth looked like that is they were porcelain crowns and they were putting fiberglass rods in there and they were putting um, actual metal rods in my mouth yeah. after they did the root canal. And I kept breaking them off. I had, I guess I had that much power in my mouth when I would bite something, I'd break one or I even tried to bite into a pizza one time and broke a tooth. Wow. Yeah. yeah I mean, I've, I've been through the process myself. I've got one that's a metal peg, which they then attach the, the tooth to. And luckily it's never broken on me, but I, I mean, the work behind it is incredible. And if you're yeah, scared it, of dentists, then it's really horrible. <laughs> I'm not really one to go to doctors either. Yeah. I hate doctors. I hate dentists. I'm old fashioned that way. Yeah. I know a lot of people that fear the dentist where I actually, I quite enjoy going because I always think of the benefit after. And I always think, well, my teeth are going to look better. And I was always, cause I had pretty crappy teeth myself when I was younger. And I always thought to myself, well, if I go, I'm going to look better. So I, I always felt really positive about the experience. <laughs> But a lot of people I know are just like, yeah, nah, <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> Yeah, I was definitely one of them. And I, until we talked about wedding, it wasn't really an option for me. But as soon as we started talking about wedding, it was, we're getting my teeth fixed before we even get married. And yeah. that that week she called and like the next week or two is when I had the appointment and they pulled all 25 teeth I had left in my head Whoa. and I spent six months really recovering because I had so much infection that it, as I said, it swelled my face up to where you couldn't and my teeth were uncomfortable so much because the swelling would go down. I try and wear them. And then it just, even now I have to have, have go back and have them fixed because yeah they don't fit right it was yeah. his idea to get them fixed just to clarify <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> well no it was a good decision i think good decision <laughs> you've got to you've got to have some good chompers in your mouth especially for your wedding pics mm, yeah i'm not much on pictures either but apparently now i have to yeah but, you do no. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's I mean, I enjoy all this, but it's not, it's not really me, but you know, certain things coming around in life and when the opportunity arises, why not take it? I agree. Enjoy it while it lasts, you know, that's all you can do. Yeah. I don't think this ride's over. <laughs> oh, it's not going to be over for a while yet. Let me tell you. No. <laughs> <laughs>
Tune in each week for Ants Talk to learn about real life stories, celebrities, and everything in between. So, John, what is some of the good things that came from your time at the zoo? You know, the Animal Miracle Network has to be one of the best things. I mean, I help people with their one of their last things they want to do before they died. And it all started because of Alyssa Finley and her stage four brain cancer and her work, her story had been told worldwide on inside edition. And that was the one thing I seen that drew me to her is she wanted to pet a baby lion and that was the one thing I knew that I could take to her and complete her wish. And I got to know her and her family and they're so amazing. And I still keep in contact with her mom and maybe some of her brothers and sisters. And they still thank me to this day that I got the opportunity to do that. And when I went to her funeral, it was, they weren't actually really all crying because they knew that she was scared to do that, but it made them realize how precious she was yeah. because not a lot of people get to experience someone that young and so innocent. And she was positive through the whole thing. There was yeah. nothing that she looked down on. She did. She never treated anybody in a bad way. She was so, so friendly and treated everybody so right. And she probably the one reason why I am the way I am now. Yeah. It's so good. It's such a great opportunity to be able to do that for somebody. Like that's really special. So John, what would you like people to know about you that others don't or have never asked? Oh, I almost think that everybody knows exactly. (laughs) I would say almost everybody knows everything now, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I would say don't don't judge people based on their their race, their color, their, their past. I, yeah, everybody likes to judge about their past. It's yeah. not about the past. It's about what's in front of you. I mean, that a lot of people do that to me still, but I don't judge them because I don't. I don't even know them and I don't really, I'd like to know them, but if I don't get the opportunity, I'm not going to judge them. Yeah. And then probably a lot of people would like to look down their nose at people and what does that accomplish? I mean, every, we're all in this together, no matter what it is. And we have to work together to accomplish whatever in life we are trying to get to. Yeah, no, I agree. I think another thing too, is that you've got a huge heart after the last story you just told us. That's another thing. Yeah. I said, I even mentioned that in the documentary and and that barely even made it in because it was like a two, three second clip. And I have always known that I've had a big heart. I just never acted on it. Yeah. And when I was around the animals, it was a totally different story because my heart always went out to them. And a lot of us at the park sacrificed a lot to Mm -hmm. make sure that they had what they had. Yeah, definitely. So what's in the future for you, John? Wedding bells. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> wedding bells is pro- is on the top of the list um when are you guys looking at doing that 
Uh, we're not exactly set on a date yet because you might have to wait for coronavirus to be over. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, what, we may even get married doing a fishing trip. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> it's just one of those things you act when you get the chance. But yeah, yeah. For what my future holds, I don't exactly know. I mean, when quarantine and stuff was over for us up here, I'm headed straight back to work. And after that, I don't know. I mean, we're working on a lot of things, merchandise and stuff, uh, TV and I don't know, TV or commercials or reality TV. I don't know what's really in store because that's too far ahead of me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds exciting. <laughs> it, it It's going to be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. Well, John, really, really appreciate you coming and chatting to me. And thank you, Stormy, also. Um, I'll leave you guys to go on with your day. And I really appreciate the chat. I hope that everything is brilliant for your future. Thank you. And come, and visit, you. Us, come and visit us one day down under. <laughs> no, we're going to. All righty. Thanks so much, John. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Pants Talk. It's like Oprah, but not.